Even if you don't think about it, printing in different colors is actually not only cool, but it's useful. I have here in my hand a tool that I wanted to print to classify my screws. And when I found this uh, STL on the internet, I thought, well, I can do one color, I can do the sacrifice to read the colors kind of like hardly, or the numbers, sorry, the numbers in here, kind of hardly by, you know, doing an effort to check them out, but I'm not gonna be, I don't have a printer to do multiple colors and things like, they were showing many of the pictures that they had in the, in the model on the internet. But then once that I printed out, I, I, and I tried to use it, it was actually quite difficult to read the numbers and I thought maybe I can paint them or something. But then I said, I know that there is a way to do it. Even if your printer is like mine, where you have only one print head and you don't have this multicolor system in it. And I went to the internet to figure out and I want to show you what I did so I could make it work. Today in the market there are printers like the Bamboo Labs with the AMS, which is a system that feeds different colors to your printer. And Prusa has had it for a long time with the multicolor thing that goes on top of the printer. And even open source projects have these uh, systems that you can build doing exactly the same functionality. For the Voron is something called like the, I don't remember the Rabbit something, it's a uh, it's kind of like a weird name, but it's exactly the same functionality. You have different spools that they are fed to your printer and you, the system automatically change, cut and purge depending which color you are using. But I didn't want to go the route to build one of those ones since I don't normally use multicolor in my printing so often, but I still wanted to do this one to be able to read those numbers on this tool. And of course, there is a way, as many times, everything, there is a way as long as you look for it and as long as you do the effort. The way is that you start printing with one color and when the layer where you have the new color comes, you pause the printing, you change the filament, you resume the printing and then like the system doesn't even know that you have done this. The system is, uh, is keeping printing the same part, but you did a manual change on that filament. But again, as I was saying, my printer has only one print head and in order to do this that I'm saying, pausing, changing the filament, purging and resume, you have to make sure that your system has two things in place. One is the the slicer. The slicer itself has to support color change and by support this, what it means is that you can mark that layer where something is going to happen, the pause is going to happen, and the system has to insert on the G-code, which is the code that is generated by the slicer to print actually the part, it's going to insert something that is called the M600 code. That M600 is the, the, the instructions to say pause, be ready that there's gonna be a change of filament by keeping the same temperature and these kind of things. Move the, the print head to a place where it's safe to uh, do the change and maybe purge the new filament and these kind of things and be ready for a resume. That's also very important. But just to give you a little bit of background, not every printer support this M600 code out of the box. And here is where the, the history and, and the interesting part comes. There is mainly two OSs that works with 3D printer. One is called Marlin, the other one is called Clipper. Marlin is used by brands like Prusa, for example, and Clipper is used very often in open source projects like Voron and, and some others. The, the Marlin, depending who has produced the code for that OS, it's going to include the M600. And if it doesn't include it, like it happened, there are some flavors of Marlin that they don't have it, it's quite complicated to get that code in because you have to recompile the whole Marlin OS, including this new code for the M600 for the system to work. 
in the Clipper side, things are a little bit easier because in Clipper you can define a macro, which is a subset of instructions, which you can name the M600. And then when the G codes comes and read M600, you have something defined for your printer to do. Intelligent people and people that knows about 3D printing can do fabulous things with this macro. And in my case, I'm not super, super savvy on all this. So I just went and I copy paste something that was available for the, for the Clipper and the, the Clipper website, which is kind of like an M600 simple uh, macro. Again, the important thing is that this macro prepares the whole thing. Pause, move the tool head, uh, to a safe place and keep the, the temperature so you can do the filament change and prepare the printer for the resume command. The resume command has also have to be part of the instructions but that normally it's in there or at least mine was in there. So Anna, so I was saying uh, you start printing your part the printer goes printing like normal and when the the color change layer that you set on the slicer comes the printer is just going to stop move the head to a right place and me manually have to do the filament change this means i have to unload the one that was there before i have to load the new one and i have to purge so i get the right color on the print head and then i issue the resume command the printing keeps going now with the new color and after all that you get your tool or your part your piece with two different colors easy to read easy to use very easy process of course this is a very simple example i use the same filament type pla in this case I believe that you can even mix different filaments when you are doing this process, but then you have to enter into uh, changes like uh, the temperature and the, 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 the printer settings for the new filament. And I'm not 100% sure how you do that, but I'm not, I know that it's possible to do. This is not a method that you're gonna be using to do very large projects where you have uh, different colors in different sections of the print. This is something that for these kind of projects, it's perfect, right? I only had to do one change in one layer and it was kind of like six layers before the, the, end, the end of the printing. So hopefully this is something that was useful for you. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment and I will try to help you as much as I, as I can. Thank you for watching and see you soon.